Hi guys, welcome along to lesson 17 of the basic uh, computer programming lessons that I've been doing. Um, I did stop last year at some point, but by popular request, there's been a lot of people looking at my uh, tutorials. Um, by popular request, I've been asked to do a couple more, so here we go. I've decided to do a couple more for you. Really to teach you just how to take a, a problem and convert it into sort of computer speak, if you like, put it into a computer program. So what I decided to do, if you've already read the text on the on the lesson, is to write a little program that creates um, a lucky number generator for your national lottery for the UK. <coughs> okay, and that said, this is the program here, as you can see. Not a very big program, very simple. And the meat of the program really runs from there, from line 30 to line 80. So you're only looking at six lines. That really does all the work in there, to be honest. The rest of it's just dimensioning, randomising, and printing out the results. That's that's all that does. But the the, the meat of the program is in there. Those those six lines there. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so how does this program work then? Well, what I'm going to do first before I even get to that is I'm going to show you that it actually does work. So let's have a look at it in action, shall we? Now, uh, if I click on to run. And you can see that we've got your lucky numbers are, and six numbers have printed out, which appear to be random, 44, 36, 5, 40, 30, 20. Now, if we run it again, we should get another different, this time, six numbers. And there we go. It does work. Uh, and it will work for infinity. We can do that multiple times if we want to. Um, there you go. And it will generate six random numbers, hopefully lucky for you if you're going to do the lottery, between 1 and 49. Now, obviously, if you wanted to change for your own particular country's lottery, if there are a different number of, of numbers to choose from, or a different number of selections that you wanted to make, or in fact, if you just wanted to adapt this program to do... Uh, lucky draw or something for, you know, uh, tickets, anything like that, then all you need to do is alter your sizes here, which is that 49 is your maximum there. So if you had a 1,000 to choose from, then you'd put a 1,000 in there. If you needed to choose a 100, then you'd put a 100 in there. Obviously, a loop would need to change from 1 to 6 to 1 to 100. Uh, and likewise, when you're printing out, well, that base and obviously a random number there would, would need to change from 49 to 1,000. But other than that, basically, <coughs> excuse me, nothing else that needs to be changing, that needs to be changed. So, how does it work then? Well, quite simply, we've got line 5, which just tells the computer that we want to randomise everything. It generates the random number here, but we just want to make that even more random by picking that. Line 10 and line 20, <coughs> they tell the computer that uh, we want to use two arrays, array F and array S. Now, Array F, I've used that for the number of um, selections that we've got to pick from, i.e. 1 to 49. <coughs> Excuse me, frog in the throat this morning. And Array S is the number of selections that we're going to make. We're going to make six selections, so we've got 1 to 6. There we've got 1 to 49, so we've got F1, F2, F3, so on and so forth, up to F49. Um, I'll explain why we do that in a moment. We could do it a different way, but this is, the, is a more effective way of doing it, and it keeps lines of code down, so it, it's a lot better. Line 30 creates a loop of six times. Line 40, now I've explained in the notes that this, I've had to alter this statement slightly so it'll run on this compiler. Um, the proper way of running it would be round bracket one, which sets the switch and then multiply by 49, it wouldn't run with that. Well, it would, but it wouldn't accept it here. So I've had to change this slightly to, to do this. Uh, I have put the alternative line that you can use in the description in the text tutorial that I've put on the site. So basically all this is doing is it's picking a random number. That's your, that's your random number there between 1 and 49. I've explained all this before. I don't really need to explain it anymore. It's in one of the earlier lessons. And we're sticking that number that we've picked into variable n. In line 50, what we're saying there, if array f position n, so if n is 10, for instance, we're saying if array f position 10 
is equal to 1, then go to 40. Now, if it's equal to 1, which is set here, I'll explain that in a second, then that means that we've already picked the number, 10, for instance. So what it would do there is jump back to line 40 and pick another random number, and it would keep doing that until it came across a position in array F that was not equal to 1. In other words, a, a number that hasn't been used. Um, line 60, this actually sets array F position N, i.e. if we pick 10 there, it would be array F position 10. It lets it equal 1, so that the next time around the loop, it checks if it picked that happened to pick 10 again for instance it would check that and it would say ah array f position 10 is equal to 1 so i'll have to go back and pick another number so that stops it giving us a duplicate number okay now when it's got through found another um, empty space shall we say a number that hasn't been used it continues on with line 70 and it lets array s that's s for sugar Position A, where A is set up here in the loop 1 to 6 for our 6 selections, um, equal whatever the random number is that was picked. So in our first example, which we've used up here, we'll continue and say N was equal to 10. So what we're saying down here in line 70 is, let array S, position 1, if it was the first time through, equal... 10, which would be the number that was generated by the random number. Uh, and then it quite simply loops back, makes A2 this time, because it's looped back to the for statement, makes A2, picks another random number, checks to see if that random number has been picked, picks another one if it has been picked. If it hasn't been picked, then again it will let, so let's say that the next number was 20. So it will then let array F position 20, because n is equal to 20, equal 1. So it knows not to pick position 20 again, number 20. It would check that there on the next time round. And then it will follow on to the next statement where it lets array s position 2 this time, because a is 2, equal the number that we've just picked, which is 20. And then it will loop back to the third loop where a would now be equal to 3. It would pick another random number. It would check to see if that random number was had been picked previously. If it had, again, it would pick another number, so on. If it hadn't, then let's say that the, ne the next number picked was 30, shall we say. So uh, then it would let array F position 30 equal 1. So that we know not to pick 30 again if it comes around in this statement here. And then it would let array S position 3 this time equal the number that we've picked, which is 30. And then it would loop back for the fourth selection, where A would be equal to 4. And it would just carry on until it comes to 6, or however many you've, you've put in here. OK, at the end of that loop, when it's got all six selections that we need, <coughs> all it does then is... It prints out your lucky your lottery numbers are, and then we create a simple loop here from 1 to 6, and we print array S, whatever A is. So we print array S, where A is equal to 1 on the first pass, 1. So we print the first position in array S, it jumps back. A is now equal to 2. It prints the second position in array S, i.e. the second number we picked, so on and so forth, until all the six numbers have been printed out. Then the program stops. So... Another quick run for you, and there you go, different numbers yet again. Well, hopefully you found this uh, tutorial interesting, and I hope that you can take this computer program, understand how now we take a, a problem, and we actually convert that into a computer program. Just a simple one to start with. I'm keeping things very, very simple here for you. Uh, why not try and improve on this? Um, why not try and print out the lottery numbers, say, in ascending order? So you've got your array S here with all your numbers in. How about adding a bit of code on there? Trying this yourselves before I put a, a piece of code up to show you how to do that the next time. Why not have a go at doing that and seeing if you can sort what's in uh, the S array 
into ascending numerical order, i.e. 1 up to 49. So everything's in order. So you've got, if you if you picked six numbers, that they would go 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 41, or whatever the numbers happen to be, rather than totally random, which they are produced right now. Well, I think that's about all I've really got to mention uh, to you guys for this one. I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, tutorial, and uh, I hope to catch you again very soon. Thanks a lot for watching, and catch you soon. Bye for now.